Welcome to my channel, I'm Scott, and in this video we're going to look at five semiconductor stocks. The first is Monolithic Power Systems, then Skyworks, Corvo, Wolf Speed, and Tower Semiconductor. Semiconductors are found in thousands of products such as cars, computers, phones, etc. An important part of electronic devices is the semiconductor chip. These electronic devices have greatly advanced communications, computing, healthcare, military systems, transportation, clean energy, and countless other applications. Companies like Nvidia, AMD, and Qualcomm are fabless, meaning they outsource chip manufacturing. The largest foundry in the world is Taiwan Semiconductor. Foundries manufacture chips for companies like Nvidia. Some companies design and manufacture their own chips, like Intel. Let's get started with the model. The first company we're going to look at is Monolithic Power Systems. Their latest financials are March 31st, 2022. And this is a large cap company, 20 billion market cap. They're trading at 421 a share, and they have 47 million shares outstanding. Let's look at their financials. The way you value a company is you estimate the free cash flows into the future and then you discount those numbers back to today's value. That's what we're doing in this video. And free cash flow is cash flow from operations minus capital expenditures. Their free cash flow doubles from 120 million up to 225 million. Net income is the profit or loss on the income statement. It's revenue minus expenses. And that also grows every year from 109 million to 276 million. Their revenue more than doubles from 628 million to 1.3 billion. The weighted average cost of capital on Finbox for this company ranges from 7.2% to 8.5%. I'm going to use the middle whack for all the companies in this video. So 8% is the discount rate we're going to apply to the future cash flows. We estimated four years of future free cash flows. We also estimated a terminal value, which is all cash flows past year four, that's 9.4 billion. We discounted those numbers back to today using the weighted average cost of capital. We get a value of the company of $8.3 billion. We divide that by 47 million shares. And we get a calculated stock price of 178. They're trading at 421, so they're trading at a 136% premium. It's a sell according to the model. Their revenue is projected to be 2.3 billion in 2024. In 2023, it's expected to be 2.1 billion. In 2022, it's expected to be 1.7 billion. And then I just continued that growth into 2025 and I got 2.6 billion. That's how I got their future revenue estimates. And they convert on average 19% of their revenue into free cash flow. The way I figured that out is I summed up these four free cash flow numbers and I divide it by the sum of these four revenue numbers, and that comes out to 19%. So I multiplied their future revenue estimates by 19%. That's how I got their future free cash flows. The website Simply Wall Street values the company at 408. They're saying it's 6% overvalued. Seven analysts priced this stock, and the average price target is 557, the lowest 500, the highest 630. If you invested $10,000 into this company 10 years ago, and reinvested the dividends, you'd have $237,000 today. That's a 2300% return or a 37% annual return. This is where the stock has been trading the last five years. It was under $200 a share until the beginning of 2020, and then it shot way up to almost $600. It has come back down in the past few months during the bear market. It's currently trading where it was about a year ago. But if you bought this stock any time before July 2021, you'd be up a pretty good amount right now. The second company we're going to look at is Skyworks. Their latest financials are 331, and they're a large cap company, 16 billion market cap. They're trading at 102 a share, and they have 161 million shares outstanding. Their free cash flow is pretty steady. It peaked in 2021 at 1.1 billion. It's a little over 1 billion in the trailing 12 months. Net income is up a lot from 2019. It was 850 million. Now it's 1.4 billion. It was 1.5 billion in 2021. Revenue is up 56% from 2019 to the trailing 12 months. 
Their weighted average cost of capital ranges on Finbox from 7.8% to 8.8%. I use the middle whack of 8.3% and that's the discount rate we're gonna apply to the future cash flows. We estimated four years of future free cash flows. We also estimated a terminal value, which is all cash flows past year four, that's 25 billion. We discounted those numbers back to today's new weighted average cost of capital. We get a value of the company of $23 billion. We divide that by 161 million shares. And we get a calculated stock price of 142. They're trading at 102, so they're trading at a 28% discount. It's a buy according to the model. Their revenue target in 2024 is 6.1 billion. For 2023, it's 5.9 billion. 2022 is 5.5 billion. And I projected their revenue in 2025 to be 6.3 billion. That's how I got their future revenue estimates. They convert on average 23% of their revenue into free cash flow. So I multiplied their future revenue estimates by 23%. That's how I got their future free cash flows. The website Simply Wall Street is really high on this one, $742 a share. They're saying it's 86% undervalued. 22 analysts price this stock and the average price target is 147. The low is 120, the high is 190. If you invested $10,000 into this company 10 years ago, you'd have $47,000 today. That's a 17% annual return, a 370% total return. This is where the stock has been trading the last five years. If you bought the stock five years ago, you'd be flat right now. The stock did double after the COVID surge, but it came right back down. So if you bought the stock in the past five years, there's probably a 50% chance you're down because you could have bought it anytime here or here or one of these points. Unless you caught the stock when it was below this line during these points, you'd be up right now. The third company we're gonna look at is Corvo. Their latest financials are 331. They're a large cap company, 11 billion market cap. They're trading at 103 a share and they have 108 million shares outstanding. Their free cash flow looks pretty good. It more than doubles from 2019 to 2021. It has declined quite a bit from 2021 to 2022. Their net income rises every year from 133 million to over 1 billion. Revenue grew 50% from 2019 to 2022. It does not increase every single year. The WAC on Finbox ranges from 8.5% to 10%. I gave them the middle of 9.3% and that's a discount rate we're gonna apply to the future cash flows. We estimated four years of future free cash flows. We also estimated a terminal value, which is all cash flows past year for that's 18 billion. We discounted those numbers back to today using the weighted average cost of capital. We get a value of the company of $17 billion. We divide that by 108 million shares and we get a calculated stock price of 153. They're trading at 103. So they're trading at a 32% discount. It's a buy according to the model. The company's revenue target for 2025 is 5.3 billion. It's 5 billion in 2024, 4.5 billion in 2023. And I continued this growth into 2026 and I got five and a half billion. That's how I got their future revenue estimates. They convert on average 22% of their revenue into free cash flow. So I multiplied their future revenue estimates by 22%. That's how I got their future free cash flows. The website Simply Wall Street values the company at 242. They're saying it's 57% undervalued. 16 analysts price this stock and the average price target is 141. The low is 120, the high is 180. If you invested $10,000 into this company when they started trading in 2015, you'd have $15,000 today. That's a 49% return, a 5.5% annual return. This is where the stock has been trading the last five years. If you bought this stock at the end of 2019, you'd be flat right now. If you bought it before 2019, you'd be up. Unless you got lucky and bought it during the COVID crash, you'd be up right now. But like most stocks, it went way up and then came way down. The fourth company we're gonna look at is Wolf Speed. Their latest financials are as of 331, and they're a mid cap company, 9.4 billion market cap. They're trading at $76 a share, and they have 124 million shares outstanding. Their financials don't look so good. They have negative free cash flow every year except 2019, negative net income each year 
Their revenue is down 39% from 2019 to the trailing 12 months. However, their revenue is up from 2021. According to Finbox, their WAC ranges from 8% to 9%. I gave them the middle WAC of 8.5% and that's the discount rate we're going to apply to the future cash flows. We estimated four years of future free cash flows. We also estimated a terminal value, which is all cash flows past year four, that's 5.9 billion. We discounted those numbers back to today's new weighted average cost of capital. We get a value of the company of $3.8 billion. We divide that by 124 million shares. And we get a calculated stock price of $31. They're trading at $76. So trading at a 148% premium. It's a sell according to the model. Their revenue target for 2024 is 1.5 billion. For 2023, it's 1 billion. Their target for 2022 is 728 million. I continued this growth into 2025 and I got 1.9 billion. The average company in their industry converts 18% of their revenue into free cash flow. So I multiplied their 2025 revenue by 18%. That's how I got their free cash flow that year. And I assumed they would have negative free cash flow before that. That's how I got their future free cash flow estimates. Simply Wall Street values the company at $25. They're saying it's 211% overvalued. Eight analysts priced this stock and the average price target is 112, the lowest 70, the highest 140. If you invested $10,000 into this company 10 years ago, you'd have $26,000 today. That's a 10% annual return, 160% total return. The stock price is back to where it was at the end of 2020. And it looks like they just started paying a dividend in 2021 because this is the only D on this chart. The last company is Tower Semiconductor. This is a mid cap company, 5 billion market cap. They're trading at $47 a share and they have 109 million shares outstanding. Their free cash flow is pretty steady around $100 million a year. It was negative in 2020. Net income is also fairly steady from 133 million to 154 million. Revenue is up only 16% from 2018 to 2021. Their whack on Finbox ranges from 8.5% to 10%. I gave them the middle whack of 9.3% and that's a discount rate we're going to apply to the future cash flows. We estimated four years of future free cash flows. We also estimated a terminal value, which is all cash flows past year for that's 4.3 billion. We discounted those numbers back to today using the weighted average cost of capital. We get a value of the company of three and a half billion dollars. We divide that by 109 million shares and we get a calculated stock price of $32. They're trading at $47. So they're trading at a 46% premium. It's a sell according to the model. I grew their revenue up through 2025 and I got 2 billion in that year. They convert on average 7% of their revenue into free cash flow. So I multiplied their 2022, 2023 and 2024 revenue by 7%. That's how I got their future free cash flows. Since 7% is a low number, I doubled that to 14%, which is more in line with the industry average. So I multiplied their 2025 revenue by 14%. That's how I got their future free cash flows for 2025. Because as a company grows its revenue, their margins should increase. The website simply Wall Street values the company at $46. They're saying it's 2% overvalued. If you invested $10,000 into this company 10 years ago, you'd have $38,000 today. That's a 14% annual return, a 280% total return. You can see the stock is trading at its all time high. And the reason it's gone up so much recently is because Intel has acquired them. So whatever Intel paid for the company is where the stock price will go. It looks like they paid in the mid to high 40s. It's interesting to see that my price target was where the stock price was trading before the Intel merger. But maybe the stock price is worth in the mid 30s as an independent company. But as part of Intel, it might be worth more because there may be some jobs that are eliminated at Tower when they get acquired by Intel. For example, Tower may not need as many accountants or executives after they merge. There are 66 companies in the semiconductor industry and this list shows the top 21 in terms of market cap. The five companies we looked at are the bottom five. All five spend less than average in CapEx. The average in the industry is 1.3 billion. 
All five companies have a better debt to equity ratio than the average. Only Monolithic and Skyworks pay a dividend, the other three do not. All five generate less free cash flow than the average company. The average market cap in the industry is 34 billion. Monolithic is the highest at 20 billion. Corvo has the best price to book at 2.4. Monolithic has the worst at 13.7. Corvo has the best PE at 10.8. Monolithic is the worst. And we can't look at Wolf Speed's PE since they have negative earnings. Corvo has the best price to free cash flow. Monolithic is the worst. And we can't look at Wolf Speed since they have negative free cash flow. And Corvo has the best price to sales. Monolithic the worst. The average company in their industry generates 6.6 .6 billion of revenue. All five are below average. Even though Monolithic has the worst price multiples, they're growing at the fastest rate. Their three-year revenue growth rate is 31%. Wolf Speed is negative 15%. Tower is also negative. But Corvo and Skyworks are above average. ROA is net income over assets. This lets us know how well a company uses its assets to generate a profit. Monolithic is the best in that category, then Skyworks, then Corvo. Wolf Speed is negative since they have negative earnings. ROE is net income over equity. It's how well a company uses its equity to generate a profit. Monolithic, Skyworks, and Corvo are doing well in this category. Wolf Speed is negative and Tower is below average. This chart shows us the stock price results for all five companies the past five years. Monolithic has done the best up 340%. Wolf is second best up 230%. Tower is up 84%. Corvo is only up 36%. And Skyworks is actually down 2%. So to summarize of the five companies, I have Skyworks and Corvo as undervalued. Monolithic really overvalued. Wolf Speed and Tower also overvalued. There were no analyst price targets for Tower Semiconductor, but the other four companies were undervalued. For Simply Wall Street, they had Monolithic overvalued just by a little bit. Skyworks and Corvo really undervalued. Wolf Speed really overvalued. And Tower priced appropriately. So let me know what you think. Give this video a like, subscribe, or comment below. Also, if you'd like to get a custom valuation or just support the channel, you can become a member by clicking on the link in the description below. Thanks for watching.